This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasts with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, and this is your awesome cast. We're going to get geeky, talk tech, and have a lot of fun here talking about um, uh, all the all the technology and the gadgets and whatnot. With me is, uh, well, first on on the line from Studio B Gadget Extraordinaire, it's John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitter, and uh, soon to be installing magnets everywhere in his house. <laughs> <laughs> well, the problem is, so that kit that we were talking about before the show... It actually is only with the iPad Air. It doesn't work on the Air 2. Oh, no. So I don't install Magnus oh, just no. Yet. I have the oh. wrong Air. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Also with us in studio is Dutters. Hi, guys. Katie Dude is social media peoples for the Scare House, the one of the top. The top, the bestest, the bestest, mm-hmm. uh, the bestest uh, haunted house in America here in Pittsburgh. And as far, <coughs> excuse me, as far as you do, I think so. Hold on, <coughs> I'm, I'm doing things. I, I like stuff. I like social media. I like tech things. I, I'm gonna hope Sword doesn't die. I'm back. I'm back. Hey! I'm okay. I'm okay. It's all right. And uh, and as your awesome guys, we're gonna get into it here. And um, and thank you everybody in our chat room joining us us here as they do every uh, Tuesday night live. Or, dot sorgatron media.com around 6 30 p.m eastern time like i say you get a little bit we're talking about stuff that that chill is going to be talking about hopefully in, in in future episodes uh so it's not just you know it, you know it's not just us kind of looking at each other eating pizza it's a little bit of that too mm-hmm. um or or, or 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 me hanging monkeys from the background over there uh so monkey yeah. legs there you go monkey legs if you're on the video uh but you can also check out this and other stuff at uh, at awesomecast.net uh you can check out our awesome chat interview interview series we just talked to dr matt keener of uh, blackbird health about technology and healthcare and mental health in particular um and 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 he's one of the guys that introduced us to slack slocks so, damn it slack socks last week at, at unstuck pittsburgh um you can also subscribe to us on the youtube itunes stitcher spreaker iheart radio drop us a line at awesome cast go to facebook look up the awesome cast page or the group where there's a lot of discussion going on over there and you can also uh, hear us replayed if you don't catch us, if you're in the car, you're on the go, you have the TuneIn app, or you want to go to RiversEdgePGH.com every Thursday, 8 a.m. after Funny Money. Um, go, please uh, go there and listen to them in general. Check out that channel. It's a really cool Pittsburgh-based music channel. Talk in the mornings. A lot of great stuff. Also, big thanks to our Patreon supporters. This will see business development, and of course, uh, we had uh, um, last week Michael Fedor of uh, Michael Fedor Show on Twitter, and check out his YouTube channel as well. Thank you so much. It was great having our Patreons on as well. Uh, so you can support us, again, patreon.com slash awesomecast. Um, and with that, let's get into our awesome things of the week. Uh, Chilla, what do you got? So, so, so if you open up the first link, and it's it's pretty much just a JPEG, right from TiVo's site, um, it shows you the typical TiVo DVR mem- menu. Okay, this seems, um, this seems and, familiar. And this is, so what TiVo has done is they've started to to roll out skip technology to their older DVRs. So they pretty much, I would say, about every two years, TiVo comes out with a new DVR. All new features, sometimes and, and a lot of times a new form factor, shrinking it, uh, making it look cooler, etc. Um, what they did with this is they started the, – the Bolt got the skip feature and now it's rolling out to all the older DVRs. So you can see here right next to the shows, you can see how it has the green skip logo. Right. What that means is when I play that back, if you go to the second link – the moment that I hit a commercial, I get a little prompt in the upper left-hand corner that wait, says, wait, first press of all, D, first press of, 
Go this, ahead. this is definitely a Viagra commercial from the looks of the picture. <laughs> it's it's just the wanna... only good screen capture I could find online, and it was the first one I was I was I was racing to grab or uh, find a screen uh, capture. I, I apologize. I just had to point that out here. But <laughs> it's just it looks so happy. Um, Studio B also brought to you by Viagra. Mm, mm. <laughs> but what it does is as soon as you the moment that a commercial starts playing on your on your DVR show, that message comes up in the upper left hand corner. Hmm. And it's press D to skip. You literally press D on your remote and it immediately takes you to the second that the show came back from commercial break. Hmm. So instead of actually even so typically what we were doing was you'd you'd start watching your show and when you got to a commercial you'd double tap fast forward so you got the second fastest fast forward and it would play and then when the show came back you'd hurry up and hit play and TiVo actually started doing a really good job of figuring out the average person's reaction to play hit play during a fast forward segment and it would actually skip back to where it thought you really meant to hit play so you didn't clip the first few seconds of voice or whatever on a, on a, after a commercial break. No, I don't even have to do that. Commercial starts there and I hit D boom, TV shows back. Not like it's, I can't even explain to you how amazing it is. A and B, if they don't have the skip information for the TV show that you're watching, it's like, really, I have to fast forward through the commercials. Like it's 2015. Like, aren't we in the new age like this? It's just, it's just phenomenal. And I have yet to see it clip anything off or I have to watch like the last three seconds of a commercial, um, things like that. And the one thing I will say about it is I do find myself saying, Hmm, I wonder what commercials I'm missing. Sometimes we all like to see the new Apple commercial or Microsoft commercial or, or something along those lines from a technology perspective. Um, but all in all, I would say this is pretty amazing technology and yet another thing that TiVo has done to, to move forward, move the ball forward um, in the DVR race. And it'll get more interesting as I think the, I guess the FCC wants to try to deregulate or decouple the DVRs from the, from the services. That's awesome. Um, and, 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 you know, I we I've had a DVR from the cable company, right? And mm-hmm. uh, and 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 from what I understand, like you, sometimes they even like kind of stop that. So does TiVo have that where it stops you from from skipping? No, no, they don't. It, like that's that's a a built in Comcast feature, I guess, right? Mm-hmm. So, well, and to, don't forget. So most of the Comcast DVRs and even the Verizon DVRs are made by Scientific Atlanta, or they're made by Motorola, um, and they get the different firmwares from the, the Comcast and whatnot overlaid on top of them. TiVo, you get, you go, you can go to Best Buy and pick up a TiVo, right? Right. And you can use it with an over the air antenna, or you can call your cable company and have them send you a decoder card to shove in the back of it. And all the decoder card does is handle the decryption of the encrypted TV channels coming across the wire. Okay. So I have all of TiVo's services. The, uh, now, I do lose things like I don't have any of the on-demand stuff that that um, Verizon or Comcast would offer. But I also don't have to pay for DVR rental. Right, right. Um, that's awesome. Uh, it, well, it's good to see that TiVo's kind of still keeping relevant here. Mm-hmm. Um, in this day and age, but uh, yeah, and they also have all the apps, right? They have, you know, like you can throw Hulu in this or Netflix to have kind of more Hulu, complete. Netflix, uh, Amazon Prime, HBO. Um, H. Uh, they don't have HBO to go yet. Okay. Um, but we do have like Pandora and a couple even music ones. Awesome, awesome. Uh, so check out the new TiVo. So, so, so this this is rolling out the old TiVos. Like, do we know how far back? Um, I want to say it goes back, I think, four or six years to the, uh, I can't even remember what they're called. We actually have one in Christopher's room. We're stuck in there for prolonged periods of time. Anyway, it's 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 three revisions back, so it's probably six years back Awesome, from a technology perspective. Awesome. Go check it out. Um, and consider that TiVo. 
Uh, it, you know, it, it, it's not something that I consider. I think like I don't think it would be worthwhile for me with over the air, um, unless potentially like I could see like if, if I had the right configuration of, of programs that I watch that um, you know are over the air, I'd probably be good to go. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that's worthwhile for me to pick that pick up something like this for for, for that. But plus, I like some of the originals as well on Hulu, and I like being part of that. So, and 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 I don't even have to think about the commercials. Um, and is there still a fee for TiVo? Yeah, I think it's about twelve dollars a month. Oh, so exactly what I play for Hulu. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, no, that's awesome. All right, uh, Katie, how you doing over there with the? Ooh, I got awesome a thing. link for you. Um, if- here, I'll paste it in there and see if you can get it to pull up. Okay. It's something I don't think Chilla owns. Oh. Oh, oh you'd be surprised. <laughs> oh, no. I don't I don't think you have this one yet. Hold on. Let me get this right in here. Why? Yep, maybe. There we go. Is this working? Let me know if it works. You can't, you can't cheat and have something that, that's not even out yet. <laughs> that's I true. I don't think, I think <laughs> it's out. I'm, just, I'm trying to get it to load here. All right. I got it. It's phone soap. What? It's a UV sanitizer for your phone. <laughs> you put your phone in the little box. It looks like a little phone tanning bed. It does look like a tanning bed. And magically, it sanitizes your phone. You can even hear the notifications while it's in the little cleaning tanning bed. Do you have one of these, Sheila? I do not. Oh, there's a product oh. video. It seems like a gimmick. 100% phone safe. It's, it seems like it should have an As Seen on TV logo. Oh, yeah, completely. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it, but the cool. It's an acoustic audio amplifier too. Yeah, that's true. It's it's large. I guess it would have to be if your phone's fitting in it to to fit everybody's everybody's phone. So all the phone sizes. This lady is very cleanly looking. She yeah, she is. I mean, she's box. wearing a sweater and uh, and everything. So oh, we're plugging something in. Uh, it's what the heck? Well, we just throw those cords. <laughs> oh, whoa! She just lassoed that cord into a plug. Yes, she did. Yes, she absolutely did for for audio. Yeah, she 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 connected the USB to like the power brick and then completely just lassoed in it went right into the wall. So uh, they're having a little bit of fun with this. So I mean, is this is this factual? Is this science? Does UVs uh, uh, kill kill the germs? What, does don't people have the UV um, toothbrush holders? Okay, they store their toothbrushes in. Okay, so I don't see. It's probably the, the same UV technology. I've actually never heard of that before. Oh, really? No, I've never heard of that before. See, you also probably never um, watch Big Bangs. So that's one of the things that you okay. uses, too. Okay. I'm also probably very, very dirty. Uh, <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> so I don't. But, uh, oh, it's all, you know, phone soap. Uh, that's that's interesting. I mean, you have to think about it. And our phones are filthy disgusting. And you, we right. all know that. And, you know, your phone has been in the bathroom. Your phone has been in every gross place you could ever imagine. Your hands are the dirtiest part of your oh, body. Oh, my gosh, yeah. So... Just stick it in a dog's mouth and it's cleaner. Uh, and, and you look at the phones and it's very hard to clean them. I mean, I, I have used a Lysol wipe on my phone before. Whether or not that's the correct protocol as far as cleaning a phone. Right, because you, you don't want some like some like that the chemicals to get into mm-hmm. the crevices. Like I know it, you can't use certain stuff to wipe the computer screen, mm-hmm. right? Uh, because that can get into the LCD. It will like, kind of permeate in there and, mm-hmm. and you'll have a problem. Right? Well, even the, uh, the, the screen protectors. Like the, the screen protector I have on my phone, uh, you have to watch it because anything with a little bit of alcohol will kill that too. Mm-hmm. So it's it's something. It is a real concern. <laughs> here's how it works. So I'm I'm surprised, and and here's where I think they could really grow this market if this if this works. Um, why wouldn't for the number of tablets that are used in hospitals today, mm. why wouldn't they make something like this for the tablets? Yeah, that's a good question. Like you probably don't need the acoustic amplifier, but if 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 a if a hospital, because I've seen in hospitals where they have like a dock mm-hmm. a dock unit that fits like thirty iPads to charge them all simultaneously, if you could kind of modify this to be able to charge them between shifts or whatever mm-hmm. or overnight, depending on how the hospital's working, I would think that this would be a definite quick win for the medical industry as a whole so uh, from the chat missy's actually saying um the dentist dentist put their tools into something that looks like a little microwave thing i'm guessing that's the same kind of thing Mm -hmm. so um so so i guess this is proven 
Uh, so it's, <laughs> this guy's this guy's like like uh, he's taking Q-tips to his 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 shoes and apparently to dirty up the phone. And and they're gonna they're gonna do they're gonna science they science this thing and they mm-hmm. made some fun videos for it. Uh, so uh, phonesoap.com if you want to check it out. Yeah, it actually says you can clean anything, including at the bottom if you're looking at it. Here you go, Chilla. Clean anything, including it looks like pacifiers, credit cards. Oh, your Apple Watch. Ooh, not sure how to clean it. There you go. Anything phone sized or smaller can fit in this thing, and therefore you're good to go, right? Yeah. So this is pretty awesome. fantastic. Phonesoap.com. All right. Um, I have something equally questionable. Yes. Um, so we all know the robots are going to be taking over the world. We saw the video this week from Boston Dynamics where they're they're knocking over the the uh, the robots with the with the hockey stick. <laughs> it's been a very very disturbing disturbing situation. Um, but uh, how about how about artificial intelligence that's going to help you schedule? You guys know in the last few weeks, and I know some of you have been on some of the meetings that i've been trying to plan with uh vite.in v-y-t-e.in uh, i talked about a little more uh over on basic sorgonomics over sorgatron.com but this one is um x.ai uh they were talking about this on i think mac break last week uh per- or, or maybe this week in google uh so so basically it is a a personal assistant and uh, it, 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 you're on a waiting list right now. It's, it's very beta at the moment. And they actually have a few scenarios like um, you basically, you know, somebody will say, hey, do you want to go meet for coffee on about this thing? And uh, you, you respond and basically the uh, Shore, Shore, you know, Mary, who, who invited you to coffee and Amy, who is the name of your assistant, you CC Amy, which is Amy at X dot AI, uh, find 30 minutes for coffee at my office. Cheers. Um, and it goes through and constructs emails and does the whole back and forth for you on, is this good for you? No. Is this good? No. Is this good? You know, as you get to when you're planning meetings, as you guys know. Um, and then in the end, you you get it scheduled. Now, I think there's a little bit of getting into your schedule and kind of figuring out the no fly zones and everything but and and locations and 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 things like that but um it if it works it'd be amazing right we're all trying to solve this kind of scheduling problem right and uh and but i love that it's still just using email like you guys you know you've seen the vite.in that i use like it's its own interface right like that's how they, that's how they're trying to solve this problem, but the, but again, you know, the issue is now I'm sending people these things that look like something completely different. They have to click through, end up on this other website, and have to. I can tell that there's a little bit of a learning curve when people are popping in there and doing things, um, and I'm trying to kind of work on it and make it as clear as possible because on that one you select what dates are good for you. It's just like boom, here's dates, boom, here's locations, boom, you can add a add a thing how many people it shows you the dots for everybody that says this date is okay and you can say okay most of the people can make this one let's do it right um this just looks like it's just one-on-one for instance so that might be a little bit easier uh but uh but again just kind of staying in a a uh conversational email situation you know much like siri is supposed to be doing right so i don't know what do you think jella I think it, I think it's a really cool idea. Mm-hmm. Um, the implementation is looks interesting. Um, I'd like to see how it works cross platform, and do people find it too cumbersome versus you know, give me a few times. I don't know. I, it, the concept sounds really really cool. Like I, I feel like you're still going to get like kind of the same problem where I just have these emails back and forth and did somebody just lose my email tree, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Because that's the problem I've been running into as I'm scheduling things is like, okay, that doesn't work. Does this work? And then you don't get another email, right? You're still dependent on that other person responding to emails. And 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 I don't know if it's going to like just continue to kind of poke you for this thing. Uh, what do you think, Katie? I, it's... I'm just curious of when things are just going to kind of start bouncing off each other. Like you're going to have too many schedule planners where it's like, oh, wait a minute. It looks like you have this time free, but then you already have something else planning, like holding that space. Right. Do you know what I mean? Because it's, it's, right. 
when you're like bite and things, it's, it's, this might be an opportunity here and this might be an opportunity here that you're leaving open after you get all the responses. And then meanwhile, this is like, Oh wait, these are both open. And then suddenly right. everything's double booked. Well, right. Does that make sense? The, the other, the other thing that I do, and I don't know what you guys are like, but there's times where my schedule gets so hectic that I actually have to put meetings on my calendar, but then I plan out an action item. So like today I, I had a I had four things that I had to do and each thing would have taken about seven to ten minutes. So I actually took a half an hour on my calendar tomorrow and put in the agenda those four things and I booked it's just a meeting with myself, right? Mm -hmm. But it guarantees that I've carved that amount of time out of my day. Now, if my boss looked at my calendar and he can't see what any of the things are, it just sees that I'm blocked, right? He may want to have a conversation with me about something that I would actually put above those four things that I want to get done. If he doesn't reach out to me and say, hey, and he just looks at the next available time slot, maybe it's two days from now. So I think there's a certain human interaction that needs to take place with a lot of that. So if you try to right. wrap too much AI around it, like Sorg, imagine if someone came, if someone just used this and said, "Hey, I want to meet to talk about something," and they didn't tell you there was a video, there was a deadline for this weekend, but it paid a million dollars for for twenty minutes of your time. I know it's an exaggerated <laughs> example. Please but... contact me, vite.in slash Sorgatron. <laughs> uh, I believe it is. <laughs> but but you know what I mean. So if you if you don't give additional opportunity and you try to automate a lot of this, I, I, right, I, I right, worry that certain opportunities by a lot are going to be missed. I think anything like this, you need to audit a little bit. Um, so I've, I actually do do that. Like I, I tried, you know, I, I didn't work last week because you know, a, 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 an assignment came up and I really couldn't pass it up uh, last week. But like, for instance, I block out Wednesday mornings on a weekly basis and it just says work and it's work on the podcast stuff. Cause all that, all the extra stuff about after awesome cast and wrestling mayhem show, I need a block to, just get just push through that stuff and get it out and then it's done right um or if i'm looking at a day and i'm saying okay well what needs to get done okay i need to work on this project let's let's just carve out roughly like two hours over here to make sure i'm working on this client's work here and working on this client's work here and i need to get to this wrestling show at it right um no i completely do that absolutely do that especially after those few weeks when i was like it seemed like i was meeting with everybody and running around and not actually getting work done um mm -hmm. like you need to you definitely need to especially if you don't get especially if you can't invoice anybody until you actually do the work <laughs> it's it, it gets to be an issue um but no no i think i think i think that's a that's a good hack around that um that also helps you know again if you do have something like the vite where somebody can actually go and suggest a meeting you know again stuff is already blocked out sometimes i actually block out days and say you will take this day off you know, mm -hmm. or, or yeah. hey, this is because especially something like like a Memorial Day or something like, hey, it's Memorial Day. Don't plan anything. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've done that with holidays. Like I have to holidays because I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get X, Y and Z done. And I'm like, well, oh, wait, no one else is doing well, when you when you when you don't have a day job that says, hey, see you Tuesday. You just you just wake up and do what you do every day. Right. And 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 the days kind of all blend together a little bit. Um, so. Uh, you know, yeah, I think I think these are the, exactly the kind of hacks. Now, if 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 Amy over here at X dot AI um, can 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 work this, I hope you can give it different names. I don't think you can right off the bat, but uh, right now there's a waiting list, so no, we haven't had our hands on it just yet. Um, so if you go over there, um, sign up for the beta list. It puts you on a list. Um, I actually shared, I believe, I, I shared a link out on my Facebook. I put it in Slack actually, <laughs> and I and I tweeted it as well. Um, and if you click on that, I believe that bumps me up in line and I think you get bumped up with me Whoa. in, in that group, the, uh, in line for this. So, uh, so, so if you're interested in that, go over to twitter.com slash Sorgatron, click on the link and join me. Everybody join me over there. I'll, I'll, I'll try to throw the link in the uh, chat room as well. So, um, all right. And, uh, that is our awesome things of the week. Uh, so, hey, want to give a shout out to our good friends at uh, Slice on Broadway, who I had a nice chat today with. Uh, um, I, I, I got to be the training call for one of the newbies down there. 
Um, so they called today and they were like, oh, we were just talking about you. I'm like, oh, we're in trouble now. Um, <laughs> but no, great guys. They've been supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with a perfect pepperoni pizza for uh, almost two years now. Um, kicking it over here. So uh, everybody comes in the studio. Actually, we got some more people coming in for uh, kind of an impromptu show after this. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and again, everybody gets fed. It's dinner time, you know, it, and we'd like to get people in the studio in the studio but sometimes chill has got to just hang out and chill a tower is over there in dormont <laughs> but uh, that's okay too that's okay too uh so go check them out slice on broadway.com um say hi to the guys let them know that the awesome cast and sorgatron media uh sent sent you and of course uh, uh check out some good stuff over there and they're also on main street there in carnegie pa uh so please go check all that stuff rico and the guys um all all being Awesome, awesome stuff over there. It's a Pittsburgh original. And hey, Beachview is moving on up. Stop for a coffee. Stop for there's some there's there's some other interesting things apparently coming in as well. So dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> um, so let's get to okay, guys. Oh wait, wait, what is this? What is this? Who who put an app of the week in here? Uh oh, I did. Okay, okay, good. We're not going to talk about my addiction. <clears throat> Chilla, what do you got? <laughs> So, um, and I think we've talked about Gift Brewery in the past, uh, making it easy for um, creating gifts and converting video, as well as I think we've talked about. There's a, there was a, another lice cap for doing screen captures. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gift Brewery updated to version three, um, and ver- mm-hmm. version three lets you uh, convert your video clips into GIFs. You can record your screen, webcam, iOS device, um, and get that converted to a GIF. You can resize and crop video. Um, you can add captions and overlay images. I've used this a lot for doing um, iOS tutorials for certain apps where you want to point them to something and tell them to tap somewhere. Um, you can alter f- uh, frames per second. Uh, alter frame count and delay set looping pretty much anything that you would ever want to do with a gif um so because they've updated in the mac um os app store does not have an extremely good way to handle upgrades um it's free right now for a limited time so if you were a prior user of gif brewery in the 2.x lifespan um you can upgrade for free. And if you never used Griff Brewery before, um, go out and download it now because it's free. Nice. So just, just jump out to the Mac. O- and this is Mac OS, right? This is not iOS. You can you can do an iOS screen recording. Um, but this is this is a Mac OS app. All right. Good. Good. Because I was actually a little confused because my, uh, my browser crashed. So I wasn't loading it up. Um, I just downloaded it. Oh, no. Got it. All the guests. <laughs> So go check it out, Gift Brewery. Um, awesome, awesome. Sorry, I didn't have any visuals for you there. Um, so, so wait, so it's uh, Gift Brewery three. I'm, I'm loading it up. Went we'll install it now. Um, so we're checking it out over here on the Mac. There it is. Boom. Uh, so what was it before? How much was it before? Uh, I don't remember. I think it might have been like ten bucks. Oh wow. Mm somewhere in amongst there I, I don't i honestly don't remember but all i know is i i, I saw the upgrade and i'm like oh i'm gonna go out and grab this i'm gonna go actually upgrade my existing version and it was like there's no upgrades pending so then i went and searched for it and it's like free for a limited time this please got, upgrade this is actually going to be really handy because if we have something interesting go on like on the video version of the show or or on the wrestling shows or anything like i i can completely see you like um um dropping stuff in there uh, and making uh, making something out of this because we've used um, we we've used uh, some websites because uh, you, know, you know you guys have seen the Ken Rice uh, uh, GIF as well, right? So, um, oh, check it out, GIF Brewery on the Mac. Don't you wish you had a Mac? Windows people. Um, Speaking of that, yes, this is a good segue. Okay, good because my dock needs to come back. <laughs> Speaking of which, no, this is a. Uh... I saw we had a little retweet from our buddy Doug. I'll be I'll talk about that buddy Doug. Yes, still waiting for my Yay. my okay. thing to our load. Buddy Doug says from uh you know Douglas Durda and SIDT fame. Uh Facebook is opening live to Android. 
Now, should I drink that can be as cool as Sorgatron Media. So now we can watch our friends on Android do silly things like drink on camera live. Yeah, so um, uh, finally opening out. I'm, I say I'm still kind of waiting for the Pages version myself. Um, but uh, but yeah, uh, have you been messing with uh, Facebook Live at all, Katie? Or are you still periscoping? Uh, I've been periscoping still. I've not. I, I kind of had a plan for Facebook Live. I haven't tried Facebook Live from um, Scarehouse for sure yet. Mm -hmm. But um, I actually, I haven't even tried it for my own personal one yet. I, I haven't tried. I've watched you do it. I think that's the extent of my Facebook Live experience. Because, like I said, I, I just go back to Periscope. I need but, to do this. Like I said, it, it definitely I like it because it's 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 people I know pop in and interact a little bit mm -hmm. versus just a random person that that are not nice on Periscope. Yeah. So it kind of depends on what you're doing. Um, depends on who your audience is that, that you're trying to get out to. It's really I'm just kind of you know reaching out to kind of the closer yeah. people that follow me anyways, mm -hmm. um, and, and trying to uh i don't know i don't really have a goal i'm just kind of trying to see how people react to it and how many kind of jump on board i definitely don't have like 50 people hopping on a periscope you know um i have like 10 mm -hmm. when on a good day and, and actually chatting stuff so but then again i started my experiment with it as uh just staring at the camera for five minutes straight and seeing how how, how people react to it so i don't know so that's popping up in everybody's feed. Um, related to that, uh, Katie, I was showing you before, and now I have to wait for the thing to load again since my browser crashed. That's probably what browser crashed the browser, actually, uh, since this is a little bit older version of Chrome. Um, but Snapchat um, launched uh, Snapchat Live. Mm -hmm. So this is a web-based place where you can watch Snapchats. And I think, uh, to my knowledge, I think this is the first place they've been able to do that um they started with the oscars over the weekend right now because it is tuesday it is super tuesday so it's tuesday with a cape um that's going on right now and and they have i believe this is a curated feed that they have going on here mm -hmm. and because it's got bernie sanders hillary clinton's in here uh the, the ted cruz a uh, bunch of stuff from trump going on and uh and and then just also just people going to vote Right. There's Virginia's governor that just popped up on here. Uh, somebody else going. Uh, ben Carson, a neurosurgeon and author talking about voting, apparently. Uh, so, no, it's uh, it, it's pretty cool. So it's, uh, it's pretty fun to uh, go check this out again. They're, they're doing it for big events. So I kind of wonder where they're going to go with this. Right. Well, they also I, I don't know if you have seen have seen it lately, but whenever there was a debate on TV, one mm -hmm. of the Snapchat filters was the places um, how people were placing in the debates, like kind of like how the, the feedback where the feedback was falling after the debates, which I was kind of like, what did, where did this come from? This is <laughs> so it's, it's interesting. And to me, it's, it's Snapchat. They're using Snapchat to reach a generation of voters that they haven't been able to te touch with social media. Mm hmm. A younger demographic for sure uh, i like seeing that there's a web web thing because it, it feels like everything is like what what happens is snapchat stays in snapchat kind of mm -hmm. which which has been a problem for me for saying okay i put this here and it's here for x amount of time um what value can i get out of that right or uh, you know deliver with that i guess as well um so and that, that's been something i'm trying to poke at for a while but if you can i mean if this is something where maybe eventually uh maybe eventually like you can we could do a snapchat live of geez i don't know of, around the show like can, mm -hmm. can we can we eventually just do our own but it looks like they're just doing their own big events but again they've had this in stories you could follow um big events like this too like i remember seeing ones for mardi gras or super bowl um so where it's just pulling everybody together for mm -hmm. that um, and I wasn't clear how how do you become part of a feed like that? I have no idea. Like, is it because I'm using a geo filter, perhaps? Maybe. Well, I would see the problem is, is not none of us. I mean, it might be in a location where you're near some sort of. Well, for instance, I have one for for leap year, and well, you know, there's a Super Tuesday one as well. And if I can pull up here, maybe. Tech's not working for me tonight. I'm sorry. Um, so if I pull up here, um, yeah, we got like leap year, mm -hmm. uh, and there's a geo filter. There's a 
There's another geo filter around leap year. See you in 2020. That's that's all that's left. Apparently, there's two left <laughs> um, from that. And, and and again, these are all curated, right? And even like this, I, I hit the Super Tuesday one, and it's exactly the same stuff that they're doing um, on the live on the website. Mm-hmm. And that, um, again, I've seen I've seen Bernie open it up. I don't know how many times here, <laughs> unless I knew Bernie's leading in Vermont. So I don't know if that's a indication of anything. This looks like a commercial. What the heck? No, this is just everyday people. This is an eagle. Taking pictures of eagle. The Purge. Oh, it's an ad. I love it. They just ran an ad in the middle of these Snapchats. For the Purge. For the Purge election <laughs> year. Yes. Wow. Well done, Purge. Well done. That's amazing. Oh, that made um, me so happy. Look out for that. Uh, but hey, there you go. That's how they're monetizing. Mm-hmm. Now we know. I'm getting freaked out by all these Snapchats just running over here. So, um, all right. <laughs> Getting down to the stories, uh, Chilla. Tell me about what. Whoa! Tell me what Samsung's doing. So, and I wanted to get other people's feedback on this because when I saw this, I thought, "Wow, this was pretty darn cool." And then I read multiple, multiple rants, um, on, um, and complaints around this, around this look and feel of the hybrid sim slot so if you look at the article i published what they've done is they've taken the sim card slot that you would normally have on a lot of devices and they added more height to it and they let you put an sd card in that same tray i guess this has been done in the past a lot where you could have multiple sims in there and samsung on some of their lower end devices, the Galaxy A devices, they that this is also where they put the the micro SD. I thought it was a pretty cool idea in a way to make it where you didn't have to have the whole back end of the device open up and you didn't have to do a bunch of crazy stuff to lift out the battery and put it in, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That was a pretty cool concept. And then people were like, this is just a cheap workaround and how could they do this? And wham, 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 wham. <laughs> I, I actually thought it was a pretty neat concept. The only thing you know, that I see wrong with it is if I want to swap out my SIM card uh, or my SD card, I have to disconnect from my cellular service. Mm-hmm. But I feel like on most of the older phones anyway, it was under the battery. So I had to take the battery out of the device anyway. Yeah. Um, I thought it was, I don't know. I think it's a pretty neat way of doing it. And I would wonder, I mean, Apple, I'm sure in no time soon is going to allow you to add removable storage. But if they did, I would think this would be the way to go without having to get crazy with form factor and removable shells. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What are your guys' thoughts? Like, do you think it would be too much of a hindrance to? To eject the SIM card tray to put in. I mean, it's not like you're swapping out micro SD cards for yeah. space. I was going to say because the, the way that the apps work with Android, you 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 kind of just put one put one in there and, and you go. You just expanded your storage storage. Mm-hmm. Right. It's not. I put. I took video. I'm taking that out to plug into something else because yeah. there's a lot of right. better ways to do that between Bluetooth, Wi-Fi sharing, even on like an Android device, right? Like I think even Samsung does. You know, some of the, some of the tray mm-hmm. tools that we've talked about before, right? Yeah. I mean, and they have they have where you can plug right into your laptop and they have an iTunes like client that'll suck all the video off. I mean, there they, there's multiple ways. So it's not like you have to get at that card other than if you wanted to upgrade to a larger one because you filled up one. I, don't know, I thought it was a pretty I thought it was a pretty neat concept. And I was surprised to say like people were like, stop the insanity. The only thing that would make I mean, not some just the design is how often does this just kind of like bump and pop out? Are you mm-hmm. putting yourself at a risk that you're going to catch it on something? I don't think so. Because think about it. If that were the case, then every you'd, you'd be dropping calls because you'd be accidentally ejecting your SIM. That's all what the I time. mean. Like I, I can't, I can't figure out if it's you know how um, in some of the things it's, it's kind of like a pop mechanism. You kind of press in and it pops out. So these are these are the pinhole. Okay, so you have to actually physically oh, go in. Geez. and Yeah, so it, it, it's kind of <laughs> okay. like the SIM tray on an iPhone, right? Okay, so yeah. you really have to. Okay, I was so I it, was thinking the way they're making it sound that it's so, you just kind of like, oh, here you go. Like we were talking about, we're just going to pop out a card and go back in. And this oh, is, there you this go. Is, so, so can you, can yeah. you see, I don't know how okay. well. 
So yeah. that, that's, I know, that's I know a, it looks like an iPhone, but it's a Galaxy device. <laughs> oh, um, of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> but but yeah, it's it's not it's not like um, it, I can just pop pop okay, in this. Good. I gotta put a put something in that little hole, mm-hmm. and it'll pop the tray out. So I, mm. I mean, it's a novel idea. I don't think it's like it's not as horrible as people are making it out to be <laughs> like is it just like oh my god this is the end of the world like you said on some of these articles i feel like i feel like the form factor for it kind of leads the way to allowing that removable storage on android devices and and keeping that going because i thought that was always a good pro to the to carrying an android device was the removable storage yeah because it's, mm-hmm. it's and almost- when people started taking that away i thought it was kind of a this is one of the things you shouldn't have copied Apple on, guys. Right, that's yeah. the advantage, right? <laughs> yeah. So, but like, I, I, you know, is it Samsung just saying, okay, let's go the Apple route, not just take, you know, you know, mimic, mimicking it on, 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 on everything else, but like, let's do one where we design, we over design and cut features like Apple mm-hmm. does, mm-hmm. right? Um, is that the same phone where you can't even remove the battery? Yeah. So the newer, and even on the newest, and I think this is the the workaround right on the s6 line the battery couldn't be removed and there was no way to add storage Mm -hmm. now they've kind of come up with this as well you're still not going to remove the battery but we're giving you your removable storage back and this is how they worked around that but i thought it was a good way to work around Mm -hmm. like i don't i i personally think that and I like what they've what Samsung's even done from their wireless induction charging that if instead of swapping batteries, you can actually get like a charge case that the phone sits in and it's actually getting its charge just through the touch. The fact that it's pushed up against it, there's no wire plugging into it or no crazy way that it inserts. I don't know if you've ever seen like the Mophie cases that kind of have like a port on the bottom and they slide together to, to force the charging into the device. Mm-hmm. Um, Samsung's really advanced that, that play on how you can get more battery without actually plugging into anything. Hmm. I mean, I, I look around my house and I'm, it's over here. I mean, even like, here's a puck. I can plug this puck into any USB and by merely laying the phone down on it, it charges. So, and that's what they're starting to do with some of their cases. The, the, the case has the same technology, but it has a battery reserve in it. And by merely pushing the two together, it's charging. Hmm. That's just my two cents. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Samsung. They're, they're definitely, um, yeah, they're definitely interesting. To, they're, 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 I, I do like that they, they, they are the nicest looking phone. Mm-hmm. Um, they are doing different yet same things, uh, to, to, to iPhone. Um, so, uh, yeah, I like I'm pushing the buttons like this. So Samsung equals espionage. Yeah, exactly. Like it's just, <laughs> I don't know. It, it's like you have Blackberries, like the official phone of very confidential, very high end things. And then Samsung's the other sneaky phone and Apple's kind of <laughs> mm-hmm. sneaky phone. So uh, this was just passed along. Um, um, Heather, Heather, uh, hold on, trying to get her, make sure I got her name right. Uh, uh, Heather is doing a a a, 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 a um, ride sharing podcast. Um, I hope that, that I mentioned her on the, on the show before. Um, she shared with us. Um, so you guys, I don't know if you follow me on Twitter. You know that we knew there was something going on with a film crew uh, about two blocks from my place here in Beachview. Uh, well, she shared with us, and, and where's Fuzzy at? Because it's the uh, Audi Quadro Challenge, the, steep, the steepest street. Katie, this looks familiar to you, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. This, looks, this is over on Coast Avenue. Yes. Um, that house is still for sale. Uh, and by the way, uh, actually, if you take a right where that was shot, that's my street. <laughs> that's amazing. That, that's, that's definitely my street. Um, and uh, it's over on Canton Avenue, which I think is like the steepest uh, residential street um, I, at least in Pittsburgh, 37 degrees they're showing off here. And, um, there's, the, then they're showing bits of the, uh, bike races that, that come through here, um, every year. Like they close off down there and there, there, there's, there's bikes to come through. 
Um, and uh, no, it, it was kind of a cool local thing. So, and I guess they uh, trucked up that thing. I have never dared to go up this street. Oh, it's not even paved. It's, it's no, it's it's not even paved. Like it's dirt. It's it's well, it's wow. Whoa. Uh, okay, so there's that snow. They put the snow there. Like, where's where's this in the rundown? Because I can't see what it's you're. It's not seeing. in the rundown. No, I just saw this on Twitter actually. Uh, so, um, uh, Missy, if you can, can you drop that in the chat room? Maybe I can actually, uh, so you guys can check that out as well. So, um, so there you go. There's awesome. a little Pittsburgh awesome right there. They're skiing down this down this thing as well. That's they awesome. did so much crap over there. There's no borders jumping. There's Red Bull. There's an Audi going down the hill. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy uh, i'd be really worried if i was the person that lived across the street from where that that hill ends a little bit um no but uh yeah uh so that that's pretty cool if you want to go check that out uh check out audi quattro challenge the seat the steepest street and uh and you can should see that video and check out my neighborhood a little bit mm -hmm. as well so that's all thank you heather for uh sharing that too uh check her out at heather uh e mcsee on uh, on the twitters and and uh well hopefully she'll have information if she doesn't already uh very soon um about her podcast coming up um so hey katie uh yes. tell me what slack's doing oh man mm. this is this is big slack so we have skype we have hangouts now slack wants to get involved with this slack wants to be part our um only voice and video chat um, if you, we've heard, you've heard us talk about Slack several times in this podcast already. This is the way that we kind of, uh, use our business communications. We have different conversations within there and kind of keep things kind of neat and tidy within each other's little worlds. And now they're within, they're working on it very soon. They're going to be able to have a uh, voice and video. So we're going to be able to integrate that into our meetings. Uh, Slack's more business based. If if you're you're looking for something in your company that to communicate, uh, send files, send photos, uh, send pretty much anything between your coworkers. Um, but now you can actually they want to be able to communicate. It makes sense. It makes mm -hmm. sense. Um, I mean, I I don't see this as a replacement for what we do here mm -hmm. for the show. Um, but I could definitely see this as hey, we're doing a meeting. Let's let's you know just connect over here if everybody's in the app anyways. So, uh, and then there's other numbers here about like how much they've, you were talking about before about how, how much they've grown in the last like year. Um, it was what three, which I'm sorry, 2.3 million daily active users when up they, from 2 million in December. Yeah. Which is at, at this point, you, you've heard us talk about this too. It's, it's how important it is to show this growth mm -hmm. because of, of everybody, you know, it's, they're publicly traded, they're sponsored by companies, they're sponsored by individuals and you have to show this growth and here's Slack demonstrating growth and that's just going to pull in more investors, more tech, more advantages. It's, it, it's going to be pretty awesome. I think I, I'm curious to see where they go from here. So we've been a few months on this and I know mm -hmm. I, I was reading a curious uh, a medium post today and saying, Hey Slack, I'm going to quit you. And talked about how Slack was supposed to replace email, but now she, he just has um, like 98 inboxes. I think he's using <laughs> Slack wrong, uh, to be honest. Uh, you're like, I, you know, we kind of use it kind of as a messaging platform. And, and um, yeah, there's messaging and stuff going on, but I don't feel like I need to. Like, I'll see there's activity on Slack, but I'm busy. I can't go check it. And, and, and I know it'll be there for me when I come back. Right. I put something on there like, you know, we have a Slack for awesome cast. I put the document in there. You guys get to it and know that's where you go to get to it later in the day whenever you guys are available. Because I know you guys have meetings and you have you know your day jobs or whatever the case may be. You know, I, it, I don't I think I think there's definitely a mindset to that, you know. So so here's my cure for when people don't communicate on the channel that I want them to communicate on is I reply to to whatever they sent me on the channel <laughs> and I'm using channel interchangeably here on the channel that I want them to communicate those types of items on. So if this person is now stuck with 98 inboxes, it's because everyone's communicating everything across all channels or mediums. So Sorg, if I wanted you to give me the link to the rundown every Tuesday. And I wanted you to give that to me on Twitter every Tuesday after you posted the link on, on Slack, 
I would DM you and say, hey, can you DM me the link? You know what I mean? And sooner or later, <laughs> you would stop. So you're, you're socially <laughs> engineering practices here. So again, like the Slack thing, you know, uh, so I, I, I've noticed that people started talking about certain parts. Like I, I, I think somebody missed, missed, uh, uh, missed Slack into a, a, the general channel today. Um, like topic suggestions for Wrestling Mayhem show. But the conversation, I, I, I know they were responding to the conversation that was already happening over in that channel. So mm-hmm. I was like, hey, back over here. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so, so and that's fine. Th- and that yeah. happens. That happens. Or, or and you- I think you can train your the individuals if you want them. If someone started emailing you very informational, but hey, just think about this type things, I would probably respond back on Slack saying hey so and so thanks for the insert link here Mm -hmm. great ideas you know what i mean and try to start steering the conversations across the medium that i want them on and then sooner or later everyone will just fall in and then as as we've now built onto all this i'm starting to use trello as of this week now, oh yeah uh, katie and i had to sit down and, and trying to figure out how what's the best way to do this more task management and now i have two to do lists I have remember the milk and I have Trello, but now I have the social to do list, right? Like the okay, I want to see if so and so got got to that thing yet, right? And, and seeing where, where where projects are in their process. So um, I don't know. It's um, it, 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 you got to find the, the tool that works for you. Slack's not going to work for everybody, right? So so in, in my my thought process is Slack is is and has been always aiming themselves to be bought. Oh yeah. yeah. Um certainly. I could see Microsoft or Google snagging them up over time. Mm-hmm. Um one of the problems I have, like I was saying, is it's blocked at work um for me, so I can't get there. So it's funny, right? Because I get a notification that you send something across Slack because it sends out the iOS notification. So I get that across Wi-Fi, and then I drop off a of Wi-Fi so I can log into Slack, and then I jump back on Wi-Fi after I check it. So yeah, it's just a total. that's just a, but it's because they're not HIPAA compliant, so they don't they don't right. meet a lot of the healthcare and and financial regulations. They're not. No. That's so they everyone says that, and I'm not familiar with the product. Yeah. That Stitch is the Slack for healthcare. Okay. And financial. That's interesting because Slack was brought up. Uh, so, like I said, I thought that Matt Keener of Blackboard Health, and I know they were talking about uh, Slack being used inter office. So, maybe, are you sure it's not? Maybe the higher end that you have to pay for at the enterprise level might have it? Yeah, maybe maybe they, they recently introduced that. I know when it came out, it definitely wasn't HIPAA oh, compliant. Oh, yeah, but definitely when it started. So, I, I couldn't imagine them starting off and with that. Skype is actually adding. Unfortunately, the, nobody knows when you say persistent chat that that means that's what Slack is. Mm-hmm. Um, but Skype for Business is introducing persistent chat in Office 365 online. And I think it, they're planning to bring it to on-premise installations in mm-hmm. a future revision. Awesome. So I was excited. I, I still need, you know what, maybe, you know, it's been two years. Uh, maybe I should finally uh, uh, pick up one of these things, but uh, Raspberry Pi three is now out. Okay, uh, and uh, it's uh, it's a sixty four bit processor. They've added Wi I think Wi Fi and Bluetooth are now built in, I believe. Uh, so uh, right, and it's still thirty five bucks. So there you go, pretty powerful computer. Even the Raspberry Pi um, operating system Linux that that's a part of it. Um, actually is not 64 bit but again if you're getting in there and programming stuff for it you do have access to those instructions um this is becoming more and more to me like i, I i'm seeing i'm seeing some some benefits to snagging these things to like okay for me i'm thinking of um something that we want to do here in the future where we're simply playing video or streaming video to a tv like in an office um i think this is all i want so if you're if you're familiar with back in the days of hacking the old original Xboxes and there was a product called XBMC that they then ported to Linux. Right. Plex Plex is kind of a, a version of XBMC. And then XBMC became Kodi, K O D I. Mm-hmm. Um and the new version of, of Kodi version sixteen is codenamed Jarvis, by the way. <gasps> but 
<laughs> they, they have a Raspberry Pi version, and if I were going to say anything, check out check out that distribution of of Cody because it is like the perfect media player built off of kind of like a Linux kernel that was meant as a up down left right B A mm-hmm. kind of interface it doesn't require any real typing there's on-screen keyboards um the whole release was meant to run on an xbox and the only input device you had was your right your game controller so um it, it can do remote and local storage dvd blu-ray other media it has every codec under the sun for for video decryption it's just an all-around great I mean, and wonderful I mean- It'd be a playlist of what we do that just went mm-hmm. kind of persistently going, right? So, mm-hmm. that, like that, I guess that's all I would need because I because otherwise it'd be uh, hiding a tower, hiding an old tower somewhere, right? And hoping in, like the Windows doesn't try to update, right? Um, no, I can completely <clears throat> see that happening. So, awesome. And with that thing about it, you could remote you could remote in real quick and do some quick and dirty updates. Oh yeah! Oh well, certainly, certainly. Um, oh, version 17 is going to be called Krypton. Nice. Hold on. I, I, I'm, I'm, somebody's responding to us on Twitter. And I'm going to find out Slack is HIPAA compliant. Um, so, uh, cool. So there's that. The Raspberry Pi 3. Um, I, I did not get my chance. I, I missed my window for getting the, the mini Raspberry Pi magazine. I was, I was stalking Barnes & Noble for like two months. For two months and then the next issue came out and I was too late. So eh, it happens. Um, I have some game stuff, guys. Uh, the next PlayStation 4 update will let you play your games on Windows PC or Mac. Um, so I think they're they're all already using the streaming thing for PlayStation TV, which I think they're discontinuing. If the news I heard is is a pro, is, is 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 right, and and actually Xbox was already um, was at least in line to do this right with Xbox. So One. Xbox was doing it with Windows 10 only. Of course, so you had to have an Xbox One and Windows 10. Um, so it's interesting that Sony's kind of taking it to the next level, PC or Mac. Hey, it's a feature. What would be what would be really cool is if they got an app on the because Windows 10 is now in the Mac OS, mm-hmm. so if they get they, if they get it on Windows, could they get it on the Xbox? So I could play my PlayStation from my Xbox One. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> so, 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 so think, you just you just so broke me. About, for, just... for those people for those people yeah. that have multiple game systems, mm-hmm. and you don't want to have to flip flop sources. Mm-hmm. To go to jump from cable TV. So this is the whole reason the Xbox One put an HDMI pass through in, right? Was because they wanted to be HDMI one and they didn't want people leaving the Xbox to jump back to the TV. It's one unified experience. So wouldn't it be interesting if they deployed the if Sony built this same app for Xbox One so I could run I could put the PlayStation in the closet, right? I mean you could you could have a rack of different devices. And all it's doing is remoting in that that content. That'd be amazing. Because I've heard I heard Steam wants to do this. Mm -hmm. I heard Steam wants to put it out on Xbox client. That'd be great. That'd be amazing. Um, The developers would probably be pissed because then they won't be selling the Xbox version. Actually, Microsoft probably wouldn't want to do it because then because they get the tax off of every every copy sold. Right. Um, They but I'm sure they could work that same same deal out with, with what Steam. Yeah, why not? Uh, I think there's a lot of reasons why not. But uh, I mean, Apple pulls it off; they still get their that's, that's their percentages off of stores. That's true too. That's true too. Embedded stores, so I don't see why you couldn't. It's, it's money coming through the ecosystem, and it gets taxed at thirty percent. Um, and other game news, yeah, you guys, it's uh, it's uh, the anniversary for Pokemon, and uh, Twitch is celebrating uh, by watching Pokemon, like not playing. Like we're actually watching Pokemon, <laughs> and it was something like seventy thousand people watching at one time. <laughs> so I, th- there you go, Twitch. Um, we all watched Bob Ross a few months ago, so I mean, this is just inevitable. Um, when, when is Twitch, Twitch is just going to become like this, this, this. It's just going to be where we watch stuff. It's going to be. It's going to be the social. It's going to be this. Everyone go to. It's to me. It's the equivalent of 
let's all go to the movie theater but have a conversation while we watch something. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Um, in other news, uh, there was a certain article on Next Pittsburgh this past week, and uh, Katie, I think unbeknownst to her, was featured in it <laughs> in passing. Uh, no, uh, our friend Kim Lyons did an article about um, uh, uh, female podcasters in Pittsburgh and uh, uh, featuring Marta of uh, Marta on the Move that was on this show um, about a month or so ago and uh, a few others. Uh, I actually had, uh, I actually uh, may have a quote in here, um, but also uh, Katie got, got uh, mentioned with it. the uh, Scare House podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you read the article, Katie. I wanted to get your thoughts on, on, on what's going on here. Oh, I thought it was great. I, I thought the best part of the article that it, it introduced me to podcasts I didn't even know existed. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I noticed that a lot when I saw the retweets and, and people looking into it. I was like, this is fantastic. And I, I think that's always hard to discover new podcasts, you know, for anybody. And especially female ones is just awesome because you're like, oh, wait a minute, this is cool. Because you, you, you kind of need those other role models. Not that, you know, Sorg is not, like I said before, the godfather of podcasting. Sometimes I need a fairy godmother of podcasting. <laughs> really all, all the girls look up to me. Yes. No, no. Uh <laughs> uh but no no it was a great article um and 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 i never really like i knew like i wanted to make sure you know we were diverse here Mm -hmm. you know and and everybody's represented here um but i never thought about like the grander like i just never thought i just saw the female podcasters Mm -hmm. right i never thought that there was a huge disparity there um but apparently this but but it's still very very active and 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 um i mean i I, in the article i I kind of attribute to the same reason um you know that there's the diversity problem in technology right Mm -hmm. i mean it it it, it, it's everybody came from technology into this the first podcast were all technology podcasts for Mm -hmm. a reason because we're because we're all the ones that figured it out. So whatever yeah, because you got to know how to run a real player encoder. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> so all those inherent problems that happen in the tech sector are are going to carry over here. But I think there's a lot of good things happening, a lot of diversity happening here. I'm, in my personal opinion on this whole podcasting thing, whole podcasting thing mm-hmm. is, I can tell you being at podcams early on in seeing the intro to podcasting and going, Oh my gosh, there's no way I could ever do this. And and just totally being intimidated by the whole process. And someone called me a podcaster and I was like, what? Like, it was like such a a big deal to me. Cause I was like, I I never thought I would be at the, you know, I, I, you would ask me five, 10 years ago, you know, would this be something you would be doing? And I'd be, I would tell you no way, there's no way I could do this. And then you just learn how simple it is. And and it it just really just requires an idea, a commitment and go with it. And and just, you know, the software, there's free software. There's, you know, you don't need to have high end technology to do it. Anybody can do it. And Mm -hmm. I mean, our phones are capable, you know, it's, it's fantastic. And it's awesome. How, how simple is it? I'm on, I'm on big shoots and I have all this equipment I drag with me. I still throw an iPhone Mm -hmm. up by the speaker, um, just to, just as a backup. What, What are you, what are you doing over there? Oh, that's me. I'm MySpace talking you. You're MySpace talking me? Why are you MySpace talking me? Because we had a conversation about whether what's on MySpace still. <laughs> oh, no. And, it's um, just me with a frog hat. Yeah, so I'm MySpace talking you. This is, this is how techy I am. <laughs> you can learn a lot from people by going back to like 2009 on their Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. we That was an adventure. We'll have to do that another day. Uh, Chilla, make sure you pull up your Facebook from several years ago uh, because we want to go back and discuss what we were doing, what, seven, eight, nine years ago? My gosh, and then we're back into MySpace. Wow. Wow. <laughs> well, I know what I was doing 10 years ago. This. Um, just about wrestling. Uh, okay, so uh, with that, what time is it? Oh, it's time to wrap up the show. Hey, uh, so go check that out, nextpittsburgh.com. Um, there's also really good articles about uh, the Bee Tree area and what's going on over here, uh, but that's for another show entirely uh, that we haven't started yet. Um, coming up, uh, okay, with a Snapchat already mentioned, uh, Startup Weekend, uh, Women March uh, 18th. I'll be around. Um, I'm going to be working. I'm going to be working the show. Uh, but uh, go go check that out if you're a woman and want to uh, start up again, kind of the diversity thing, right? Um, I think it'll be uh, really cool to see what comes out from that weekend as well. Um, and they've had different flavors of this. There's a regular startup weekend, and then there was a civic one, which was the first one I was I was uh, uh, assisting with. Um, and uh, so I like that they, they have some different themes on this um, throughout the year. So um, again, hey, go check out our friends um, on uh, uh, the the uh, the river. No. That's not right. Um, RiversEdgePGH.com. We're there um, every 
uh, 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 Thursday morning, 8 p.m. or 8 a.m. Uh, after Funny Money. Uh, Chilla, anything else coming up? Um, I know that Apple's um, questionable uh, 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 announcements have been pushed back to the 21st, I believe. <laughs> I, I love when unannounced things are pushed back. I know, well, right? It wasn't announced <laughs> to get pushed back. Hey, you know, it, didn't, it wasn't okay. officially happening. But it's, the, it's your story. You can tell it how you want to. It's, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, it's it's we, this world that we live in. Jeez, this is why. Sony, so, so in, I think um, that was posted that Sony's making an announcement on the 15th, and now Apple's slated potentially in an alternate universe <laughs> might make an announcement on the 21st. <laughs> Oh, suspicions. <laughs> and, and and P.S. By the way, I, I, I'm going to sound like a complete moron here, but how do I see my MySpace history? I I can't. Okay, you're gonna. Okay, you really can't see your MySpace history. <laughs> this is our tip of the week. Yes, tip of the week. We're in, we're we're knee deep in MySpace here. Um, you actually have to go in to where was I at? Your messages are gone. Like it looks like there's pretty much a lot of it is just gone. Um, yeah. But uh, your mixes are include your photo mixes and your music mixes. So you can still see your photos. Okay, here's a question. Yes. What was my username? Oh, good question. You were, jug- I, you were, you were something with... Um, I searched under your name. Weren't you something with uh, ICP? That's what I thought, but uh, it wasn't coming up. So Let me see if I can find you. As I search, well, I think it's name. I think it's totally funny that you can authenticate with Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so my this is just yeah. They, well, you they, don't have they, any connections. Well, they, yeah, it's weird because you now have connections, and it tells you whether or not you're kind of not compatible, but what was the phrasing of it? Um, oh my gosh, let's see if I can figure out more about it. Because well, MySpace has turned mostly music, right? Yes. So I mean, it's it's. I, I know I actually go to, back to it whenever I want to do a throwback Thursday because I know a lot of the early um, good wrestling mayhem show picks are here. So mm-hmm. like we got to search and everything, but should I just go under people, I guess? Um, yeah, you have to go under people. If you search, it's going to be straight up music. Yeah, because I was like, I, I typed my name and it didn't come up. I was just a bunch of artists, right? Yeah, and you can request your blogs. They must have just dumped a whole bunch of, well, didn't they sell this off to oh. time? Uh, Didn't we just have that conversation not so long ago that they sold? Yeah, they, they sold to, to somebody. So I bet you Time currently has all that stuff, all of our angst, all of our blingies. Um, Tim, Justin Timberlake needed a write-off for 2015. Wow, well, apparently uh, I, I, updated, I updated this like not that long ago because we're still down here in this studio. And uh, there's Rob De La Creta and Riz here in the studio, apparently. And mm-hmm. there's Jim Loke on on the Wirecast that we still use. Uh, so I guess that's so. I, so there's connections, and that's it. Yeah, it's, it's oh, if you go under uploads, then if you, there's a thing that says music and there's a photos button right next there's to photos. that. Photos. So you'll get a lot of embarrassing photos. I do not have any photos. Seriously, I don't have many photos, left. Albums. Yeah, this is um, this is weird. This is really weird. It's kind of sad. I, I want I want all my angst. <laughs> I and it's like oh, looking at this, it's like oh, there's there's my ex boyfriend. I'm it glad did, he's still in my top eight. Congratulations, I jerk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like I really don't feel like. Did we post just how we felt on this one? Like, how did we communicate on here? You had a you had a wall theory. Like there was a theory. Remember, you could go into your profile and put in kind of all kinds of CSS script and yeah. completely jack up your page and <laughs> have crash, all kinds of animated GIF backgrounds and yeah. mm-hmm. all kinds of mess. But what, where I'm at a loss, like you, I can't find. They got rid of the old wall stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it's just it's weird because it's we we posted things, oh gosh, a lot of pictures, a lot of friends. I I don't remember, like I'm trying to remember the stupid. It was stupid. It was really not that. Great. I mean, in the long run, and then Facebook took over, right? Yeah, so you, there's anyway. people I don't even remember who these people are. <laughs> Katie has a restricted profile. Is this you with oh, a yeah. picture of the Coliseum? Yeah, that's me. Yeah, okay. this is. Uh, there was when I first got into social media, I was very private. I didn't think I wanted people to know who I am, and then suddenly, <laughs> and now she's now she's in know me. 
all kinds of Pittsburgh. Now, now she's in, in Nick's Pittsburgh articles and all over the place and on videos and everything. All right. On that note, hey, we did get some responses. I I, I did get a, a, a Blackbird Health, uh, our friend Dr. Matt Keener was part of them, uh, was responding to some stuff. And I asked, uh, no, Slack is not HIPAA compliant, okay. uh, but health doesn't have to mean HIPAA. So you can still use certain aspects in there. Uh, actually, we had a good conversation about using text messaging with clients with certain amounts of information. So to, to kind of just, you know, again, lowering that barrier. Uh, so go check that out. That's over at awesomecast.net. It's the awesome chat with Black Blackbird Health. And we have a lot of other great uh, awesome chats. Uh, we might have one this week. I, I don't know. I, I know it's not a strong schedule there with the chats. The interviews are as we get the interviews. Uh, but look, looking forward to some really interesting ones uh, in the coming weeks. We might be talking to a movie production crew, actually, on the awesome chat. Um, and also uh, Joe Wos is, uh, is uh, scheduled to join us in the very near future as well. Um, uh, formerly of the Toonsium, who's helped us out with Chachi Plays for kids in the past. So very excited for that. So um, on that note, go check us out, awesomecast.net. Subscribe to the show. Join us live. Sor- sorgatronmedia.com. I'm thinking MySpace, and I almost went to my old, my old, old, old persona. Um, live at sorgatronmedia.com, not that other one. Um, and thanks to Missy, she's in the chat room all night. Rebellious Fly on the Twitter is helping with the notes and the tweets all night long, getting people's attention out there. Obviously, as I'm seeing from my my uh, my, my, my 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 info over here, my mentions. Um, and uh, again, subscribe to the show. Thank you, everybody. Thank you to our awesome chat room at Katie Dudas. What's up on the Twitter? I don't know if you saw my socks at Katie Dudas. Oh, check our socks. What are those? Those are Darth Vader. Darth Vader socks. <laughs> that's there you go. For the, uh, that's for the audio. Yes. But uh, there you talks. go. <laughs> awesome. And Ch- Ch- John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitter. John Chichilla on the Facebook and the MySpace, obviously. And the so MySpace. if you're still, if you're still kicking in MySpace, MySpace, go MySpace. Throw me, throw me a shout out. <laughs> and of course, the Scary House podcast, where fine podcasts are sold. Thank you, everybody. I'm at Sorgatron on Twitter. All things SorgatronMedia.com, MikeSorg.com, Sorgatron.com. Thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at SorgatronMedia.com.